Breaking news alert this Wednesday morning. One Fargo man is now in jail after police say he broke into cars into an in an underground parking garage on the city's south side. Officers were called to the 2900 block of 34th Avenue South around 1 this morning to check on a person who was passed out behind the wheel of a car in that garage. Police say they found evidence that the suspect broke a door handle to get into the garage and they found items stolen from a car. 33 year old Joseph Vondel is in the Cass County Jail for burglary and possession of a controlled substance. Also breaking overnight, police in St. Cloud say a carjacking suspect out of St. Paul was shot and killed in a confrontation with officers. The man was suspected of shooting at St. Paul police Monday night. Then last night, Officers found the man in his car in St. Cloud and blocked him in with an armored vehicle. They were attempting to take him into custody when he got out of the car with a weapon. That's when officers opened fire and they shot and killed the suspect. Bison fans, they have waited a long time to see the next NDSU football game. I know Lisa's one of those <laughs> fans. And now most of them, including Lisa here, is being locked out of the stands for Saturday's game. And this is the only game that's being played this fall. Even though I understand, I am a little bummed out. NDSU is saying only family members of the players will be allowed to physically attend. The Valley Today's Brian Sherrod joins us live this morning with the details. Good morning, Brian. Well, good morning, Jordan and Lisa. And sorry, Lisa, that you won't be able to attend this game this Saturday. I do feel pretty bad about that. But the NDSU athletic department decided to make this decision for the health and safety of their student athletes, their coaches, and even their fans. So as many as 8,500 Bison fans were expected to fill the Fargo Dome seats as they take on Central Arkansas this weekend. Bison fans pretty upset for this change, but saying it's not entirely surprising as cases in Cass County and throughout North Dakota are seeing increases in COVID-19 cases. There was a part of me that was surprised, but at the same time, there was a part of me that anticipated that this was coming. Um, just with case numbers going up, um, you know, NDSU football really put the FM community first um, and, and put an emphasis on public safety. Now, don't forget, Bison fans, that you can still watch the game on KVOY. It will be on Saturday with our pregame show beginning at 1 in the afternoon. This will lead you right up to kickoff at 2.30 in the afternoon. The four home Bison games are expected to be this spring. They hope to also have spectators, depending on how the COVID-19 cases, of course, with safety. Full details can be found in our VNO News app. And again, Lisa, I'm sorry you're not able to <laughs> attend the game in person. I know. We're just bummed out. We're waiting for this one game. I'll have, still have fun watching it on TV. Thank yeah, goodness for KVOI. can still root on the team from the comfort <laughs> of your own home. Brian Sherrod reporting live. Thank you very much this morning. A B-52 bomber from the Minot Air Force Base had an in-flight emergency during a recent training mission over in England. U.S. Air Forces in Europe say the Strato Fortress aircraft landed safely and luckily no one was hurt. But the exact nature of the emergency has not yet been released. They say the aircraft received the required maintenance and has since returned to Minot. Now there are the, these are the same types of aircraft that we saw back in May during a flyover in Fargo in honor of frontline health care workers during the coronavirus pandemic. The Warbirds aerial salute buzzed Sanford Health before the pilot and the crew headed to Grand Forks, then back home to Minot. The first group of North Dakota firefighters who were helping with those western wildfires are now back home. A crew from the State Forest Service returned home Monday night after 18 days in Oregon. The six-man crew spent their time laying hoses, digging lines, and trying to control the direction of that massive fire. They say the 170,000-acre fire was the largest any of their crew members had ever fought before. The holiday fire was 50% contained when they were sent home. A Far Fargo fire crew that was in Oregon is also on the way home. Nine minutes before the top of the hour, we want to get a check of our forecast and cool today in summer. I also see there's a scroll going across the bottom of your screen. Something to watch out for today. Yeah, it's going to be a windy one. Not necessarily noticing the wind early on this morning, but it will definitely pick up throughout the day. Looking at our sky cam right now, looking east in Fargo, seeing the sun begin to come up, adding a little bit of color to the sky. Official sunrise, though, not until 725. Winds are picking up for some of us. Already gusting into the 30s in Jamestown, 22 miles per hour in Cooperstown, 24 miles per hour in Gwinter. And we'll continue to see those winds increase throughout the entire day. In fact, a wind advisory will go into effect at 10 a.m. for all of these orange shaded counties it includes the entire state of North Dakota, aside from the immediate Red River Valley. We'll still see some fairly gusty winds throughout the valley, though. Temperatures right now 
Most of us are sitting in the 40s, 43, 44 rather in Thief River Falls, 43 in Fergus Falls, 46 in Fargo and Grand Forks, 46 in Valley City, and 44 up in Devil's Lake. Looking through your hour by hour forecast, a few spotty showers along the international border over the next several hours, but notice these wind arrows really picking up throughout the entire day. So extra hairspray, maybe a ponytail will be your friend on this Wednesday. These showers sink to the south and east over the course of the afternoon and we'll even see a few spotty showers in the northern Red River Valley, maybe a quick shower in the Fargo area. But the better chance for rain today is going to be to the north and across northwestern Minnesota. Temperatures will only see in the 50s for this afternoon. Yesterday I was enjoying the sun on my patio near 70 degrees and this morning I grabbed for my thicker coat. 58 for a high in Fargo today, 56 in Grand Forks, 53 in Detroit Lakes and 55 in Valley City. F tomorrow we only reach the 40s but I really want to point out this low overnight Thursday into Friday morning. Friday morning we have a first alert weather day issued. We're expecting a widespread frost and even a hard freeze for some of our Minnesota counties that dip well into the low 30s. By the time we reach Saturday morning, there's even a chance for a few flakes to fly where we have the chilliest temperatures. Breezy again on Sunday with temperatures in the 50s, but good news, we're hopefully back into the 60s to start next week. It is October and we're talking about snowflakes. <laughs> Sounds like the upper Midwest. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Summer. President Donald Trump is heading back to Minnesota today. He'll be in Minneapolis this afternoon and then in Duluth tonight. At the same time today, his son Eric will be in Becker, Minnesota. Jill Biden, the wife of Democratic candidate Joe Biden, will also be in Minneapolis on Saturday. His visit to Minnesota comes on the heels of the first presidential debate in Cleveland last night, which quickly dissolved into name-calling and insults. President Donald Trump questioned Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden's intelligence and political accomplishments. Biden told the president to, quote, shut up and then called him a liar. Now, between the many interruptions, the candidates did make a few points about the pandemic, health care, and the president's Supreme Court nominee. North Dakota officials say a voter ID event scheduled on the Fort Berthold Indian Reservation was postponed because of the coronavirus on a day when the state reported 419 new COVID-19 cases and five additional deaths. State Department of Transportation officials have visited several reservations to help tribal members sign up for licenses to become eligible to vote in the November 3rd election. A lawsuit settlement in May ended a requirement that tribal residents provide a street address when voting. The counties that the reservation is located on had 62 new virus cases and one death in yesterday's update. North Dakota is reporting 419 new cases in the state, along with five new deaths. 239 people have died so far in the state. In Minnesota, 817 new cases and five new deaths. 2,020 people have died in that state. There's a Fargo area COVID-19 update that's coming your way today. The city of Fargo is hosting a briefing at 1 this afternoon. We'll hear from Fargo, West Fargo and Cass County representatives, plus six area health professionals. Valley News Live will bring you that briefing two different ways. We'll be streaming it live on our website, valleynewslive.com, and also on our Valley News Live Facebook page. The West Fargo School District is releasing details of plans to bring students back to the classroom for full-time on-site learning district leaders say the hybrid model may actually be doing more harm than good for elementary school students. In an email to parents last night, school leaders say pre-kindergarten through fifth grade will return to the classroom first, since data indicates they are least likely to get COVID-19. It also says they have found the hybrid model is creating more transmissible moments for these younger students, many of whom go to some type of child care. Now the school's plan is to use a pod system where students are assigned a small group of classmates to share a space with throughout the day. West Fargo Elementary families will be receiving a survey via email regarding the potential learning model change. For more details on the reentry plan, go to our website. You can also find this story on the VNL News app. Finding substitute teachers has long been a struggle for school officials, but the COVID-19 pandemic has really made it a nightmare. Local job openings for subs are now flooding the internet. Districts are finding creative ways to fill gaps, like leaning on retired teachers, colleges, and universities to sub. Yeah, we do work, you know, even into the evening, trying to find subs early in the morning before school starts. We're calling people at 5.30, 6 a.m. to see if they can help out. Requirements for each sub position vary depending on the job. 
Download our VNL News app to find out how to apply at any of our local school districts. UND will continue their current mode of learning hybrid style after the Thanksgiving holiday, and both finals and the mid-year commencement will be held virtually. School officials say they want to continue COVID-19 safe behaviors. In our Healthier Me this morning, the COVID pandemic has disrupted nearly every aspect of our children's lives, including sleep. Pediatricians from the University of Florida say it's important to establish a regular sleep schedule for kids, even if they don't go to school every day. The first step is to establish regular times for going to bed and also waking up. If bedtime has been later than usual, try moving it earlier by 10 minutes every three to four days, then adjust the wake up times. Experts say older kids should not nap because it may keep them from falling asleep at night. It's also important to turn off all those electronics an hour before bedtime and keep devices out of your kids' rooms overnight. Fargo-Moorhead Diversion Construction is prompting a visit from an Army Corps of Engineers leader. Commander Major General Diana Holland will look at the Diversion Inlet construction today. She will then head to the Diversion Authority board meeting this afternoon. The diversion is causing major controversy around the valley. Many say the metro needs flood protection, but those in downstream communities say it should not come at a cost to them. The Minnesota Vikings are currently working from home after the Tennessee Titans had three players test positive for COVID-19. The Titans, they played in Minneapolis this past Sunday, and then tests came back just yesterday morning, confirming that three players and five staff members were positive for the virus. The Vikings have not announced any positive cases. Both teams are expected to continue preparations for Sunday's scheduled games from a distance. Let's get the answer now to our question of the morning on Facebook. That question today. A third of us say seeing this instantly puts us in a better mood. I agree with this. The answer, a rainbow. And with all the rain, I think we did get some rainbow pictures sent in to us just recently into our newsroom, and I really enjoyed those too. Yes, and remember, you can always upload your photos on our app or by going to valleynewslive.com. The Today Show and CBS This Morning are just about to start, but the Valley Today, it rolls on. We'll have more live up-to-the-minute news and weather for you coming up right now on the Fargo CW.